Welcome back from my week three discussion on the interaction between learning and development by Lev S. Vygotsky. Let's begin with a summary. Opens the article by saying, the problems encountered in psychology analysis of teaching cannot be correctly resolved or even formulated without addressing the relationship between learning and development in school-aged children. Vygotsky, 1978. He then goes on to say that there are three prevailing ideas about that connection. The first being that learning and child development are completely separate from one another, that learning is a process not actively involved in development, and development is not actively involved in learning. The second, that learning occurs only after development. And finally, the third theory in which learning and development are combined. Vygotsky eventually rejects all of those theories for a new idea, the zone of proximal development. And we will focus on this idea and its implications for the rest of this presentation. Proximal development is what Vygotsky says is a more adequate explanation for the relationship of learning and development. The definition is, the distance between the actual developmental level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under guidance or in collaboration with capable peers, Vygotsky, 1978. In general, this approach shows us that learning starts long before students go to school and is therefore not something that happens as a result of development, but that learning can drive development too. Historically, teaching and learning was tied to age appropriate developmental stages. However, this zone of proximal development allows us to go outside of this method and to see a student's actual developmental level and their ability with help of others and tailoring learning opportunities to not only what a student can do alone, but also with guidance to help them achieve that potential development. Vygotsky notes that this has profound impacts on assessments that historically showed mastery only of independent tasks and implications in designing class instruction with collaboration built in. Is How does the zone of proximal development, or ZPT, illustrate the role of more knowledgeable others in learning? Recall that ZPD is the difference between mastery independently and mastery with guidance. In order to understand a student's ZPD, we first need to know what they can accomplish independently and what they can accomplish with the help of adults or other peers. Vygotsky gives us an example of two eight-year-old children. If we then see one of those children can, with, the help, with help, only complete tasks of a typical nine-year-old, while the other can complete tasks of a typical 12-year-old, are they mentally the same? According to Vygotsky, no. They are not, and therefore their learning path should be different. This is where a more knowledgeable learner most certainly comes to play, as we need some sort of guidance, such as an adult modeling the activity. But it can also be a peer with collaboration to extend the learner's knowledge to help the student and scaffold the tasks so that each student reaches the development hypothesized by their zone of proximal development. Vygotsky specifically points out how language and culture are shared by adults, the more knowledgeable other, and that children can imitate adults, be instructed on how to act in different scenarios, and therefore learn well before school age begins. Point to explore the implications of ZPD for collaborative learning in classrooms. Piggybacking off the idea of ZPD, and more knowledgeable others, Zygotsky cites Dorothea McCarthy, an American researcher who studied three to five-year-olds' actual developmental age and what tasks they could complete independently, and then compared their functions when working in groups together. She found that they could complete tasks developmentally level of a typical five to seven-year-old while in group. If we only considered their actual development, we would miss this potential development. Zygotsky's ideas be used to design classroom activities that support students at different developmental stages. 
and that Vygotsky mentions that the pro zone of proximal development has implications for, along with testing. Testing as assessment has previously focused only on tasks students could complete independently. Another area where changes will be important is in the classroom activities. Classroom activities should include guidance. I believe that this can come in many formats, one being chunking of directions or assignment parts, or by modeling by the teacher of what a student should do, for example. There should also be space for collaboration with peers. There can be roles given to students within groups, and then students work together to complete tasks. Thinking about our current class, we are participating in a very collaborative class, where by this jigsaw design, we have the ability to be that more knowledgeable party that can share our ideas and extend our knowledge. We are also learners who are trying to construct meaning from what our peers have constructed. Was to reflect on a lesson plan that involves scaffolding to support students within their ZPD. Of a project I used when I taught sixth grade science. Our class learns about different ecosystems such as tropical rainforests, coral reefs, and deserts. And we learned about different trophic levels and how energy moves in a food chain. To tie these topics together, students were given an ecosystem that they were going to research. They were first given some time to brainstorm independently, such as what plants, animals, and abiotic or not alive features are found in an ecosystem, and they were told to use their class, slideshow, notes, or text. Then they were put into small groups with others who researched the same ecosystem and they were given a poster board, markers, and nature magazines as their supplies. Their job was to build an ecosystem and to create a simple food web that would be found in that ecosystem using the pictures from their magazines or drawings if they saw fit. They would then present their ecosystem and example food web to the class. Students had jobs within their group, such as a recorder who filled in the group ecosystem worksheet, a speaker who would be the main speaker during the presentation, and the ecosystem architects who, were, who found and cut out the different pictures. The students were able to rely on one another's strengths and help guide each other through their weaknesses, such as a fear of speaking in front of the class or even misunderstanding of the knowledge. Later, their unit test included all of the different ecosystems presented in class and during the projects. this week. Thank you for watching and I look forward to your clarifying questions.